Hello everyone, Arash Jafar today here, and I'm really excited about today's video because we're going to be looking at Minecraft EDU. According to their own words, Minecraft Education Edition is an open world game that promotes creativity, collaboration, and problem solving in an immersive environment where the only limit is your imagination. The game is made for use in schools by teachers and students, and I think in the right hands it can really help make a meaningful experience in the classroom. I should mention that I'm not affiliated with Microsoft or Minecraft in any way, and this video is not being sponsored by them. I'm just going to share my first experiences with it as an educator, and if you guys like it, I'll make uh, more of these videos and mix them in with my tutorials. The simplest way I can describe Minecraft to you is like Legos, but they are highly interactive. In Minecraft, you can build and construct structures using blocks that represent a variety of materials. You can collect these materials and raw ore, process them on your workbench to create the components you need for better tools and objects. You're literally creating within your own world and the virtual sky is the limit. And you're not just limited by making tools. You can make amazing structures, non-playable characters, herd animals, breed them, farm, and even trade. You can even use something the game calls redstone to program switches and electronic circuitry to apply coding and computer science fundamentals alongside building materials to apply creativity, art, and architecture. The program also allows you to collaborate with others as you build and share your creations, and from there, the community can experience it in a highly interactive way. So, after my little introduction to Minecraft here, we're going to watch me learn how to play it with my former student, Anthony, who has since graduated from Monticello Academy and has used his skills to start his own YouTube channel about animation and gaming. Afterwards, I'll talk a little bit about creating a bridge between Minecraft and epistemology to make learning a meaningful experience to use as a teacher, or if you're a student who wants to learn about Minecraft EDU, or you just love Minecraft. So, without further ado, let's check it out. Hello everybody, Arash Jafarzadeh here. Welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be playing a little bit with Minecraft EDU, so it's going to be good for students and teachers. I'm here with a very special guest, a former student of mine, Anthony. Uh, he also has a couple YouTube channels. One is PGG Gaming and also Epiphany Animation Studio. Um, like I said, he's my former student. He was with me up through 8th grade, and he actually created a really awesome game. Uh, for his final project with me, um, what was it called? Alien Story. Alien story yeah. yeah, tell tell us a little bit about it. What was it? I kind of I made all these sprites and um, and I made it so that this rabbit would want to go and try and save the Earth by going to another planet and finding the solution to save that planet and then going back. <laughs> <laughs> it was pretty awesome for sure. It's like one of my favorite games. So it's it's really awesome. Um, so anyway, he's here because I wanted to learn how to play Minecraft, and I was sitting down with. Him, I was like, you know what? Why not bring the guru? So uh, he's here to uh, kind of uh, help me along as uh, we explore this game. And then uh, my goal is to see how the game is, how it works, and also to uh, explore the game in terms of. Um, epistemology, how you can combine that with learning theories and approaches to learning uh, to really get the most out of it in the classroom and for students to get the most out of it as well. So, shall we start? Okay. Alright, let's check it out. So, um, so I'll just, or should I do it? I guess I'll, I'll play and you can yeah. kind of talk about it and yeah. walk me through it here. No, yeah. See, See it's, the roles have flipped, okay, before I was a teacher, and now I'm, I'm like the apprentice now, and he's the master, so. Yeah. Uh, okay, guide me, wise one. What do I, what do, I do here? First thing, I think, which is how you move around, you use the W, A, X, and Y. Okay, and then I, I noticed right away it's like simple, I mean, typical game, right? So, game controls. W, A, S, D, move around. Uh, mouse to look around. Um, you can right click on things to interact. Simple. What does left click do? Oh, did I just. It destroys things. Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> what? Dude! Oh shoot! <laughs> oh my god, this is not good. First day in Minecraft and I just like committed murder in here. This is crazy. Uh oh. 
So you know what I like about tutorials like this? I always talk about this in terms of education. See, I can't go forward until I figure out how to press spacebar. And I always loved how they kind of scaffold things. Yeah. You know, and kind of that level structure is awesome. So, okay, so um, let's see. Can you get through this means? Try using WASD. All right, so see, this is like mastery now, right? I have to be able to demonstrate mastery of the controls to be able to move on. So I always liked that. I always thought, like, wouldn't it be cool to learn that way, you know, in general? Okay, so here we are. Uh, hello again. So I'm, gonna, I'm not going to left-click. <laughs> Right-click him. For her, uh, to open this door, you'll need to need the lever above the door. To activate the lever, look directly at it. Use the right mouse button. Okay, so see, so they put it up top on purpose, making you look up. I like it. I like it. Um, okay, so need to look around. All right, let's move on. Okay, so left click. All right, cool. Here we go. Free freedom. All right. Well, the red carpet. I like how they roll out the red carpet for you in this game. They yeah. really care. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Now you want to build uh, stairs. Okay. All right. So, how should you I have six or more? Oh, it's like they, they knew what they were talking about. Let's see. Do that. All right. Cool. Oh. They're switching to like green, you know. Yeah. So you're saying with my bare hands, I'm about to cut down the street. Yep. Well, that's just awesome. And it won't fall down. This is floating in air. Yeah. I mean, oh, okay. E pulls up my inventory. Yeah, so so E pulls up an inventory, and you can see there are four slots up there for your armor, uh -huh. your boots, and your leggings. And now it's talking about how you can put logs from its oak wood and any kind of wood works, but in this case, you have oak wood and you make planks. Oh, wait, so. So press E. Oh, I see. So yeah. this, the blocks here represent my inventory, and this yeah. is the output or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, and this here is about getting a crafting table. And the thing about this is that your inventory has four slots for crafting. Crafting table is the one that has three by three. So you can make a crafting table with the planks and a crafting table. So do I right click? I click one, two, three, four. Okay. Yeah. Ah! Yeah. Hey, look at that. Oh, this is like the famous pickaxe that you see a lot everywhere. Yeah. So, okay. This is the wooden pickaxe. So, but all pickaxes and tools are made the same way, but this pickaxe is equal to, so, yeah. And three wood at the very top. Oh! I didn't want to do that. Well, actually, yeah. Huh? Yeah. Do it? Yes. <laughs> and so that's why you want to make it. And um, so you get like stone um, to help you with even better tools and kind of I'm carrying stone with me. This guy must he can he can break trees with his bare hands. He can carry <laughs> he can carry <laughs> stones. <laughs> Dong, dong, dong. Like, dang, this guy's strong. <laughs> Alright, let's see. So, oh, I'll need the crafting. Oh, they have one here. Cool. Yeah. So, it's basically the same way, just instead of wood, uh, it's stone. Right, one. Oops. <laughs> Two. Oh, dude. Awesome. Oh, and I noticed there's a little green bar yeah, for my axe. That means that that's your durability for that pickaxe. So when that green bar goes away and turns yellow or red, once it's completely gone, it breaks and you don't have Okay, you have to make another one, I guess, right? Yeah. Uh, see that, that stuff in the stone? That black? Yeah. That wall? So if I have that wall, it's that hole. 
and the coral oh. can be mined by any pickaxe. So wood pickaxe, stone pickaxe. Oh, what's that? What was that? Oh, uh, that is yet to be. And that's a whole other thing. So, so some ores like coal drop EXP when mining, but. No, let's see if I remember this. I'm going to take my plank yeah. and just put them here. Yeah, yeah alright. Yeah, I'm, I'm learning. Yeah. I'm learning. It's fun. You may want to save some. But it's fine. Okay, <laughs> we're good. Alright, so now I'm going to take one of these. Yeah. Oh, I wanted only one. I gotta get a hang of the left and right clicks. Yeah. Alright, there you go. Oh. So, so if you put a wall or something. Just right click? Yeah. Oh, look at that. That's awesome. What are these chests here? Are these empty? Oh, it's filled with stuff. Wow. Wait, what is all this? Potatoes. Hey, if we get. Stranded on Mars, right? Yeah. I mean, like <laughs> the Martian movie. Um, yeah. And then we got raw beef, raw yeah. chicken. Yeah, that's all of us. Emerald ore. Oh, no. What is this? So, so let's get to the. I'm so glad he's here because I, I'm like, what does this do? What does that do? Uh, oh, there's more. Uh, <laughs> that will hurt me, huh? Yeah, it will. Should I? Yeah. No, no, I won't do it. Okay. Actually, you know what? There's one command, in case something like that happens, there's one command that I want to show you. So if you do slash, oh, it has that. all these different things. So, so what teachers will Are we like hacking right now? Is that oh, what's happening? I Here's a computer teacher like, are we hacking? <laughs> is this oh, hacking? Well, this, <laughs> this is something that I just learned today as I was looking at this earlier. Um, if This is for, this is good for teachers. Okay. So ability, so ability. I think if you just press the tab, then it fills out the rest. Um, and then you do space, and then you do your player name, which in this case, let's see which. Oh, there it is. So if you press tab, it it kind of just goes to the next thing, and and your player name is right here. Yeah. And then you do space, and then you do world. So world. Um, there we go. World Builder. Uh -huh. And you want to set that to true. Alright. Um, true. Okay. And so this allows a teacher to be the main builder of the world. Oh. So, so if you want, because I think everyone is, it's their default, like their original thing is on false. A world builder, which makes it so you can't break things like um, borders and all kinds of things that they've added in. I haven't seen it in a lot Alright. I think they may have brought it back just for this version. I was just noticing there's a sheep that I think they call Jed underscore. Uh -huh. Right there. It's multicolored. It fades. This color. one? See that? Oh. The sheep. And my favorite mobs of all are bunnies. Which are yeah, bunnies. well, Epiphany. I love bunnies. Hey, that's what your game was about. Is he pooping? No, I think he's just hopping and making dirt. Oh, I was like, oh my goodness, that's really <laughs> realistic. Because uh, bunnies, they're pretty. Uh, and because it looks like it too. Look, there's like little, <laughs> the little pellets. Although there were many different colored bunnies, and there is like. I don't know the exact probability, but it's, I think it's probably like one in a thousand chance you'll get a killer bunny of Capper Dog. Are you serious? Yeah. They actually have that in here? Has, like the like from Monty Python. Yeah. It's a white bunny with red eyes. No way. Oh no. <laughs> so maybe, How do you even know that? Because I saw that update in 1.8. Well, how do you even know about Monty Python? Oh, oh for <laughs> God's sake. <laughs> The rabbit. It is the rabbit. That's it, my The knight that saying, Nee, 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 nee. We're total nerds. <laughs> <laughs> Who are you? 
We are the knights who say... Ni! No, nee. not nee. the knights who say ni. Nee. The same! Hi. Oh. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> oh, how do I get it back? Oh, wait a second, go back, go back. Go back to that one where you have to get the other way. Wow. Um, so yeah. Can you grab the egg? You can grab the egg. Yeah. Just right click and close it. Um, but in order to draw, you can actually attract animals like chickens using seeds. Oh! Use this. <laughs> we haven't even made swords yet. But... <laughs> I just kill a chicken. <laughs> What did it, and it gave me XP? Is that what yeah, happened? They only have four health. Oh. <laughs> Shoot. They have like the least health. I just killed a chicken. <laughs> oh, yeah, Dude, I, that's the second thing I've killed in this game already. <laughs> this is a new thing. It's the deny block. Uh huh. So, this, if you put a block on top of this, only the world builder that we set earlier has like that command. So, that command that, um, Slash ability your name world builder true that sets you as world builder. Uh -huh. Only you can break and destroy these denied blocks and anything. Like on the blocks on the ground. Yeah. Or yeah. And, and any, whatever is, that's built on top of them. Anything that's built on top of them and anything that's above them, I think, Ooh. does not get destroyed by anyone who is a world builder. So, so if you don't want your students to destroy your creations, then you put these underneath your creations. This is awesome. So these are basically things that allow you to block areas that you don't want your students to go past. Okay, and then you can set that up. Yeah, so you can, you can walk on top of them, but, but they kind of act like gates that you can't break. So if I if I change, let's see if I type in slash WB right now, or if I don't want to be a world builder. Oh, right? oh world builder, that's, that's really good. Oh, I, I guess for me, right? Oh, that's cool. Oh, yeah, there you go. So, so, I can't go anymore. So literally, so literally, the slash ability, your name, world builder, you can just type in the and it does the same thing. Well, I think we should stop here for sure. I'm already late for my class, but, uh, no, yeah, no. no. <laughs> this is, this is for that class, so I yeah, think we're fine. Okay. Um, but maybe we can stop here and then continue on um, from where we left off. Um, I, I learned a lot. It's good, man. I'm telling you, this is how what happens over time. Uh, it's really a really awesome feeling to have your student teach you. Um, it, it really is a wonderful feeling. Glad to see you continue to grow, and I uh, love the work you're doing on your channel. So uh, be sure to check it out. He's doing some awesome stuff there. Um, hopefully, we have a up and uh, coming artist on our hands here. I mean, he's kind of already is an artist, but uh, hopefully you find happiness and success, continued happiness and success with it. But uh, anyway, check him out. Um, and uh, thanks a lot for coming out here and helping me uh, get started with Minecraft EDU. Uh, hopefully we'll see you back over here. And uh, yeah, see you next time. Cool. All right. We'll see you guys later. Well, there you have it. Minecraft's Education Edition was just awesome. Its scope is massive and there's just so many ways that you can combine these game elements to build and create. But if it's going to be used as a classroom tool, it won't be useful if you just toss it into the mix without carefully considering how you're going to implement it. Right off the bat, if you're a teacher who's trying to integrate more project-based learning or problem-based learning, I think Minecraft can definitely be great there project-based learning because the focus is going to be on using Minecraft and its plethora of tools and objects to build and construct with a clear endpoint for your students to construct and develop, leaving an open route for them to get there in terms of what they will be creating and what the project is. Project-based learning is uniquely suited to give students the feeling of empowerment, and I think Minecraft can certainly be a useful way to accomplish that since they can truly be creative through the creation of their virtual artifact. It can also be a useful tool in terms of problem-based learning. As a teacher, I can craft an experience for my students through a presentation of an open-ended problem within Minecraft's world. It's just going to call on some ingenuity on how you, as a teacher, can create that inquiry-based experience for the student. 
This experience also got me thinking about epistemology and educational philosophy. John Dewey, someone who's had an enormous impact on how we view education today, came to mind. He thought that rather than education being a passive experience by simply observing or being told about something, it should be through active participation within that environment. Minecraft can really shine here since it's all about interacting within its environment and experience building when using it as an educational tool. I think there is growing sentiment among teachers to shift away from teaching students about you know, abstract knowledge and understanding the world through the memorization of facts. As you can imagine, learning facts don't teach anyone creativity, critical thinking, how to communicate, or how to build true knowledge and a deeper understanding of life. I remember having this kind of conversation during a session with one of my professors, Dr. Poland. She said teachers should be like midwives. They are the guide. They are there to mentor. And they are there to carefully monitor students' growth. So with that kind of paradigm, the teacher has to carefully prepare that educational experience within Minecraft and account for what the physical, cultural, or cognitive needs are going to be. In Dewey's own words, the planning must be flexible enough to permit free play for individuality of experience and yet firm enough to give direction towards continuous development. Dewey was always a proponent of the child-centered approach and I think Minecraft can really succeed in that. Another cool experience I had was how immersed I became as I played and how well learning can be mediated through this mini-universe. Rather than learning material being presented directly to the student via you know, a lecture, it can be situated within the game's virtual world by combining Minecraft's open play atmosphere and the ability for the learners and the teachers to interact within it, acting kind of as the conduit for which knowledge building is taking place. One of my good friends, Ruben, once compared mediated learning to kind of like learning through osmosis. Uh, he's a science teacher, in case you couldn't tell. Well, again, Minecraft succeeds there. Lev Vygotsky, a psychologist who's had tremendous contributions, not just in the world of psychology, but also big time in education, always believed that knowledge should be internalized. So when we look at Minecraft being the mediated tool for learning, we need to figure out how to create that kind of experience and accomplish that. The teacher is going to need to craft that experience by looking at it through a social, cultural, and historical lens of the educational community. Meaning, knowing your little classroom and school community well and building that experience around them is going to be essential in making that experience meaningful. Vygotsky's famous zone of proximal development, which we often hear in terms of his work, can also play a big role in Minecraft. In his own words, he described it as the distance between what the learner can do alone and what the learner can do with assistance. It's often visualized as two circles, one larger outer circle, which is the stuff that the learner can't do and requires a more knowledgeable other to help them, and then the inner circle being the stuff that the student or the learner can do without any help. The zone of proximal development would be that kind of area between those two circles where they can have a more knowledgeable other assist them in becoming successful in what they're trying to learn. And eventually that knowledge becomes internalized as the student learns and grows within that zone of proximal development. In Minecraft, that knowledgeable other who's guiding the student along can be the teacher, or in some ways, it can also be the programmed non-playable character that the teacher has created to assist the student in learning, who in some ways is the digital representative of the teacher within the virtual world. Pushing forward on what we just talked about in terms of learning, let's take a closer look at how Minecraft can make learning more of a social experience. Jean Lave, who is a social anthropologist, really pushes the idea that learning is a social process and looks at learning through the sociocultural lens really well. Her work alongside Etienne Wenger about situated learning fit focuses on the idea that learning is a social process, that it takes place in a community of practice rather than something that is just limited to a process of the mind. I bring this up specifically because their work on legitimate peripheral participation can play a kind of role in Minecraft. It has a huge community and in the right context you can create your own little mini community of practice within its world. There learners can be craftsmen, a farmer, a breeder, a miner, an architect, and much more. 
Minecraft's framework makes it an ideal way to create a community in there. As a teacher, you can create an opportunity where the students establish identity and their own culture there, where students feel that they are the apprentice learning from a master, and in many cases, the students themselves can be the masters who are helping each other. Legitimate peripheral participation, as they put it, means to draw attention to the point that the learners inevitably participate in communities of practitioners to move toward full participation in the social-cultural practices of a community. That being said, this is a much smaller scale and scope than what Leib and Winger were talking about in their work. After all, you don't actually have students trying to be craftsmen and farmers and having that be a part of their social identity in the real world. But in terms of the Minecraft universe, I think you can use what they talked about just on a smaller scale in the form of play, keeping in mind that virtual identity can be a very powerful thing in its own way. Dr. Mark Chen, who's the author of the book Leet Noobs, shares his experiences with a big group of players in the game World of Warcraft. He talks about the importance of focusing on game practice or on the community aspect of this experience rather than simple game mechanics. This focus on building community within the game experience when integrating Minecraft will be crucial to its success in education. This is an area that World of Warcraft was really successful in because as he points out, this idea of practice-based play involves the ethnographic tradition, social norms, responsibilities, and other shared incentives that game mechanics alone can't do. This is just another thing to consider when you're looking at integrating Minecraft. Touching on these socio-cultural aspects of learning will be an important point of attention as well. The last point I'll make is the relationship between Minecraft and gamification. For anyone who knows me, they know I love games. I love playing games, I love teaching how to program games with my students, I love creating a gamified experience within my classroom as we learn together. But I don't think of gamification as a pillar in terms of learning. The true power of learning stems from the cognitive and sociocultural approaches to education. In my own practice, I try to create a bridge between cognitive epistemologies and sociocultural ones, with gamification kind of being woven in and out in certain areas of that epistemological fabric to complement it. That means I don't see gamification as just a matter of slapping on some points and giving out some badges, but something deeper and more meaningful that has to complement the epistemology that the teacher is using, not take its place. So, that being said, I had a blast with this tool. I really love it and I'm excited to experiment with it some more and see what kind of role it can play in my classroom. If there's a lot of interest, I'm planning on making some more videos about Minecraft itself and how to create within its world through the lens of education. So hopefully these videos will end up being a tool for teachers, for students, and anyone who just loves Minecraft. Thanks for visiting and I'll see you guys next time.